Hi all, I'm back for another video. I'm actually going to start a video series. This is part one of restoring this trimmer. Now, I saw a video on YouTube from Chicanic, and she actually said that people are taking these chainsaws, finding them in the dirt, in trees, in the mud, cleaning every single little bit just to have a scored piston and cylinder and for them to not run right. So really the sole purpose of the video is just to see the <laughs> piece of equipment clean. And I find that a little ridiculous. So I was thinking, you know what? I do trimmer restorations all the time. In fact, I just did an SRM 210 that looks just like this. I made it run and I cleaned up everything and I made it look nice. So that's what I'm gonna take you guys through. I'm gonna take you through the uh, journey of how I get a trimmer to look from this to a nice clean repainted trimmer. Now, I am legit going to do this. This is going to take me probably close to 20 to 30 hours of labor. And this is not a scam video. I'm just going to put that out there right now. I enjoy doing this. And it's just something that I can use as a hobby. I really, really enjoy doing this stuff. So that's why I'm going to do it. I'm just going to take you through the process. So part one is going to be will it run. Just about like all my other videos. I got this trimmer from somebody and they said it just didn't run. So I did not find this trimmer in the dirt or in the mud. This trimmer I just got from somebody claiming that it didn't run. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get it to run today. And that's really a big step in uh, the process. So this is an Echo SRM 210 trimmer. The trimmer is complete. There's no parts that are just missing on it. Uh, I often run into that. It's got, normally what's missing is this little piece right here, the trigger lock, sometimes the trigger itself. Um, those are there. The handle's there. The air filter's there. Everything is here, which is not very common. I commonly get trimmers that need to be fixed with missing air filters, missing triggers, missing handles, missing cowlings, all sorts of stuff like that. But this one is complete, and I'm glad to say that because I don't want to spend a ton of money trying to fix this. This one has the Echomatic head. It does not have a speed feed. It's too old to have a speed feed. So it does have an Echomatic. Uh, maybe I'll put a speed feed on it later on. And we'll see if I can find a used one. No chance I'm spending money on a brand new speed feed. If I don't, I'll just use this Echomatic and sell it with this Echomatic. So if you're not aware, engines, just to run, not to function right, but just to run, they need three things. Spark, compression, and fuel. So... If an engine doesn't run, it typically lacks one or, or two or three of those things. So what I like to do when I fix my engines is I like to check for spark first. I have a spark checker that I could use. Uh, and I like to check compression. I have a compression checker I can use. And typically those two things I like to s check first because usually the carburetor is always clogged up. What I'll do is I'll just spray some usually carb clean or two-stroke gas in there just to bypass the fuel system for now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the spark plug out and see what it looks like because if you have different colored spark plugs, you can tell how this engine has been abused before. So I'm going to pull the boot out. You have to twist this and pull that out. And then you take your socket and pull the spark plug out. There's our spark plug. Uh, it has had a lot of use on it. It's kind of like uh, potato colored, so. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not fouled. It's not black. You don't want it black because that means it's been running low compression or too rich. Uh, but this is an okay color. Uh, it just means it has a lot of wear on it. Maybe I'll stick this plug in a cleaner. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to put that plug right back in there. And I'm going to test spark with my spark checker. So how this spark checker works is you hook it in line with the spark plug wire and into the spark plug. Uh, what this does is every time the spark plug goes off, a little light will go off in here, indicating that I indeed do have spark. Now what you have to do is you have to make sure the stop switch is turned in the run position. It's not stopped. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull over the engine 
real fast and see if there's a light glowing in there to see if there's spark. As you can see, it did not look like we had spark on that checker, but I'm not going to give up on spark yet because sometimes my checker, it's really cheap and it's faulty sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an alligator clip and I'm going to hook one end onto the tip of the spark plug and hold one end inside of the trimmer so that grounds the plug out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch the spark plug and see if the spark plug sparks. I honestly have no clue how to tell you, but I have managed to get spark. The reason I say I have no clue how to tell you is because my spark tester didn't work, the alligator clip didn't work, but what I had to do is I had to put the spark plug in and ground it right here, right on the cylinder, and look through this hole right here, and I saw a spark. Now, I don't think I'll be able to, to show you on camera, but you'll see in just a second that it has spark, because if the engine runs, that means it has spark. All right, now that I know it has spark, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my compression tester and see if the piston and cylinder are still good. So to do that, I have this gauge here. It shows me pounds. And I hook this into the spark plug hole. And what this does is it tells me if the piston and cylinder are scored or not. So typically I'd want it above 90, about 100. That's just on the verge of running. Anywhere 120 to 150 is really good. So, uh, I'm going to plug in and see where it turns out. Here's our reading. It's right above 120, maybe 125 to 130. So that's really good. That means our piston and cylinder are good. So what I'm going to do next will prove to you that we have spark, seeing as I couldn't really prove to you that I had spark before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some carburetor cleaner and spray it in here. And then I'm going to put the spark plug in and hook it up and see if it pops off or runs for a little bit. And why will this prove to you that it has spark? Because an engine will not run without a spark. If an engine does not have spark, the engine will not run at all. So let's do it. You see that, how it popped off right there? And there again, that's how you know how the engine has spark and compression. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the air intake off and spray some carburetor cleaner in there just to simulate the carburetor working. So I'm gonna pull the trigger and I'm going to get in there and spray that carburetor cleaner all in there. And then I'm going to pull away and see if it runs again. There, you see how it did that? That means it has spark and compression. So now, what's this telling me? That we have... A fuel issue. Let's start with the simplest of basic things. Does it have gas in it? I can tell you right now that the answer is no. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put gas in it and prime the carburetor and see if it runs then. My gas of choice is Echo Red Armor. Now I used the oil and mixed it myself. I mixed it to 40 to 1 because that's what I like using. All right, I did fill it with gas, but right now, I'm not sure if you can tell, but right at the grommet, right in there, there is a fuel leak. So this means that I need to change the fuel lines in the fuel grommet. But right now, that's not what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned to see if this thing will run. So I'm gonna pump the primer bulb and see if it primes and see if it'll run. Primed up, let's turn on the choke, pull the trigger. Turn off the choke.
Okay, so that told me a few things. The first thing is that the engine would not shut off. This is the stop button. It is down in the stop position. You saw me flip it, and the engine would not stop. So I had to pull the spark plug wire out and kill the spark in order to shut the engine off. My second issue is the fuel lines. When I ran it, fuel went everywhere. You see right there, that is a puddle of fuel. So that means it's leaking fuel from somewhere. Where is it leaking fuel? Right at the fuel line. So two maintenance things I need to do in order to get this thing to essentially run. The first thing I need to do is figure out why the kill switch doesn't work. And second, change the fuel lines. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the fuel lines just because when I diagnose the kill switch, I don't wanna have fuel leaking everywhere. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump out the gas into this container so that when I replace the fuel lines, more gas doesn't spill on me. So the gas I just pulled out of here is my Echo Red Armor gas. I'm gonna look in the gas and see if there's any water in it. If there was water in it, you'd see a cloud at the bottom of the, uh, the gas here. And there is not one. As you can see here, no water, no cloud. So we're good. And there was no gas in the machine when I got it. That was the fuel delivery problem we had earlier because there was no gas in the machine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the carburetor off because in order to get to the fuel lines, I need to take the carburetor off. To do that, these two bolts right here are Phillips head. So I'm gonna take a Phillips head screwdriver and pop those off and then I'll take the carburetor off. Okay, as you can see, the bolts have been removed, the carburetor has been removed, and this air cleaner cover came off with it. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to purge the air from the gas tank by loosening this, and then I'm gonna purge the fuel out of the carburetor by pressing the primer bulb. Now there is no more fuel in the carburetor. The fuel is all gone. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop those fuel lines off. To do that, I'm gonna use this needle nose pliers here, and I'm just gonna pop these fuel lines right off. You know what? These fuel lines were on backwards. That's not good because this thing could have been running faulty. That was uh, not great. So you see on this carburetor here, this big hole and a small hole. The black one, the uh, black fuel line is supposed to go on the big hole and the colored one, the yellow one, is supposed to go on the small hole. They were flip-flopped. So in the future, when this thing got less than a half a tank of gas, it would just stall and you wouldn't know why it wouldn't run. It's because the fuel lines were on backwards. So I'm glad I caught that now. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver and pop that grommet out of there. When I pop the grommet out, these fuel lines and the fuel filter at the bottom of the tank will come out with it. But before I do that, I forgot to mention there is a third fuel line back here that's connected to right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out right there. Now this is my vent hose. I kept getting this confused in the last video and calling this, oh, what did I call it? I didn't call it a uh, vent, I called it something else. But this is a vent and this is uh, this basically vents your gas tank so that when fuel drains out of your tank, it gets replaced with air. And this is gonna come out of our fuel lines as well. So I'm gonna take my screwdriver and just pop this grommet out here. There we go. I'm gonna pull these out. My fuel lines will come out. And where's the fuel filter? There is no fuel filter on this fuel line. You know what? There is a fuel filter in the fuel tank, but not on the fuel lines. So what that indicates is that the fuel lines rotted away and the fuel filter came off the fuel lines. I decided to grab a piece of cardboard because there is some fuel left in the fuel tank. And when I dumped this out, you see that just came out right here? 
This fuel filter has been separated from the fuel line, which means the fuel lines were overdue for changing. I may save the fuel filter for a future video just because it does not look clogged. So I'm gonna put that aside. However, these fuel lines, maybe except for this vent, I'll save the vent too. Uh, it's on there. I got the vent off, I'm gonna put that aside. These fuel lines in the grommet are garbage because they're not sealing, they're breaking, and they just don't work anymore. For my new fuel lines, I'm gonna use this right here. Now I bought a kit that was already assembled for me, but if you were to replace your fuel lines, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna buy an Echo You Can kit, they call them. If you wanna learn how to replace your fuel lines, just like this one, not on this trimmer, but on the previous trimmer that I restored, I have a video on it on how to replace your fuel lines. I'll put that video up in the iCard in the corner. That'll tell you all about what you need to replace your fuel lines, the part number, the labor, how to do it, etc. But for now, I'm replacing these fuel lines. So what I need to do is I need to bring these two fuel lines right here. They're not on the fuel grommet. I'm sorry, the fuel filter. I have to pull them up so there's just a little bit sticking out because I don't want those fuel lines sticking into the tank too much. Just about like that. And this fuel line is already pre-measured for me, so I don't need to measure out how long this fuel line should be. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shape of this fuel line, it's going that way, and put it towards the inside of the tank, put my fuel filter inside the, the hole, put my fuel lines in, and this grommet needs to be tapped in the same way I took the other one out. Now this takes longer because this grommet is new and fresh, so it should not come out as easily as the other one. This will take a bunch of pushing, and this will take a little while. Uh, I'll do a time lapse of myself doing it right now. All right, my fuel lines and grommet are in. So now I need to size my fuel lines. So the one with the vent on it has to go way down here. The problem with that is you see all this extra fuel line here. I need to get rid of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna measure out how much I kinda need about, about right there, shoe fly. Right about here, right. And I'm gonna cut a little bit longer right there. Come on, cutters, these are brand new. There we go. Pop my vent off. Put it back on. And stick it in the hole. Ah, it's a little too long yet, I'm gonna cut it again. That's perfect. It's not stretching, it's not too long. It's perfect, right there. So now what I need to do is I need to measure out these field lines. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place the carburetor right up against uh, where it normally goes. I'm gonna tilt the trimmer over, and you know what? I am actually gonna put the uh, screws back in just to, sim just to uh, simulate where the carburetor would actually go. All right, so with the screws back in, this is where the carburetor is going to go when it's actually really mounted on the machine. So these two fuel lines that do not have the uh, vent on it, the black one leads to the filter, which is the one that sucks up the fuel, and the, that black one has to go on the line with the bigger hole on it. So I'm gonna measure out that fuel line and snip it. A little too long, snip it a little bit more. And I'm gonna go ahead, you know what? I'm gonna leave this fuel line off for now. I'm gonna do the same thing with the color one. Measure and snip. And leave the fuel line off for now. I'm gonna go ahead and take the carburetor back off. Now, my fuel lines are chained, and they look pretty good. So, I'm gonna put the carburetor back on for real now. Now, I forgot to mention, but the intake gasket came off when I took the carburetor off. So, I'm just gonna place that back on there. Like that. 
grab my intake cover here, place that there, put my screws in, put the screws through the carburetor, and put the carburetor back on. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the two fuel lines and the two fuel ports on the uh, carburetor itself. I'm gonna put the black one on the fuel port with the bigger hole. Push it on as far as I can, like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the smaller one, except I'm gonna put the smaller one on the smaller port, like that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back over and I'm gonna go ahead and put the fuel back in. And I got myself a little funnel here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this red armor back in. And then I'm gonna put the fuel cap back in. Again, I'll show you how to do this in my how to replace the fuel lines on an echo trimmer video. And then pump the primer, make sure it fills up. And it's filling up, that's good news. I'm gonna leave the air filter off for now because I'm not running it and weed whacking with it yet. Go ahead and put that spark plug boot back on and I'm gonna go ahead and try to start it. Now, in theory, the fuel lines should not leak. No fuel should come out, but the engine should still not shut off without me taking the spark plug boot out. Now, if that's true, that's good. That means I fixed our first problem here. So let's go ahead and start it. Alright, so, what I just said stands true. There is no fuel leaking at the bottom of the uh, machine there. Uh, there's no fuel leaking anywhere, and the machine still won't shut off. By the way, if you're wondering what this spark plug is, I was working on some other machine, and I just kind of left that spark plug right there before the video. So now, I have to figure out why our kill switch does not work. So when I was just looking at this trimmer, I'm sure you've noticed it in the video at some point, but the kill wires themselves have been chewed away or cut by something. As you can see, the kill wires, and here's the other one up here, right here and right here, these four wires have been snipped, which is not good. So that is why our kill switch is not working. So what I can do is I have a few options here. I can order a whole new assembly, or I can just try to fix the old one. Uh, I am going to try to fix the old one, just to see how it goes. And if I can't fix the old one, then I'm going to go ahead and order a new assembly. Just to make everything easier for myself, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull this cover off of the control handle so I can pull the whole assembly out. Now those wires actually lead all the way up here to this switch. So I'm going to pull these two screws out here and maybe slide this back as well and pop this off so I can take these wires out. You know what else I realized I need to do? This little sleeve here needs to come off. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to shoot compressed air under it so I can slide it back a little bit. Now, I may also have to take the shaft out because this may not fit. We'll see. Okay, so I've done quite a bit since you last seen me, but really it's only five minutes of work. What I've done is I've loosened these two bolts here. I've slid the shaft out so the engine and the shaft are apart. Uh, I slid the throttle cable out of the engine. Easy. And then I just slid this little boot off right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and pop this cover off here to get access to those wires. There you go. 
So now I've pretty much taken the whole control handle apart. So I'm going to get rid of the cable, and I'm going to go ahead and pull the wires out of here. Okay, so as you can see, the wires are all the way out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this shaft over and grab the engine. And I'm going to splice the ends of these wires and hook them back up with heat shrink connectors. Okay, so from here you could see what I did. I basically took the wires from each of the ends and I put them and twisted them together. And then I took these special heat shrink connectors and I shrunk them down with a heat gun. And now they're nice and tight and connected. So they should not go anywhere now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it back together and make sure it works. So that's going to be a long, laborious process that I'm not sure if you're going to want to watch me do. So I am just going to pause the video and come back to you when everything is back together. Oh dear, we are all back together except for this part. The reason I didn't put this part on is because the wires were just a hair too short in order for me to put the full length of this on. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to snip it. And when I go to uh, redo everything, I'll put it on snipped. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it just to make sure that everything works. You see there's my spliced wires right there. Uh, it should be connected and I wanna see if this kill switch works now. So I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna go ahead and choke it, pull it. Bingo. It works. All right, that just about leaves it for part one of this restoration video. Will it run? And uh, yeah, it runs. All you really had to do with it is um, put some gas in it, make sure there was spark and compression, uh, change the fuel lines, and repair the wires for the kill switch. Uh, and that's, uh, that's all I really had to do in order to get this trumpet to go good. So in the next video, I am going to disassemble every single thing on this trimmer the entire thing everything and uh clean it stay tuned for that one anyways i hope you enjoyed this one and uh i will see you on the next one bye <laughs>